know, it's one thing to look at a number and say, you know, five. <laughs> great. That's great. But, you know, the kind of things that we've been looking at recently have been actually collections of equations. And, in fact, we looked at for a while where it's actually looking at linear equations, systems of linear equations, where you have a lot of equations and you want to solve them at once. And you can either use a substitution method or an elimination method or and so forth. But the idea is there are a lot of numbers. It's not just five anymore. Now you've got a ton of numbers that you've got to keep track of. And if you think about it, when you look at some sort of system, say this one, which I prepared in advance, 2x minus 3y equals 1, 4x plus 7y equals 5, Really, if you think about it, the real key players here, the real important people, are the coefficients, the 2, the minus 3, the 1, the 4, the 7, and the 5. In fact, the x's and the y's aren't even important as long as you sort of remember that, you know, sort of where they belong. For example, if you just don't sort of take this and this and flop them, if you promise to keep the x's always here and always the y's here, you can perform all the techniques we talked about of elimination by just sort of manipulating these numbers. So really, all that matters, in fact, are the numbers themselves. So as long as we sort of keep things on the up and up, we could just sort of keep those numbers in the way they are, you know, not to, not to disturb and so I'll just write them all adjacent, juxtaposition, if you will. And somehow we should just be able to manipulate that. And then at the end of the day, say, OK, whatever's in here, that's the x's. These are the y's, and these are the answers. And so somehow just manipulating these numbers, we might be able to make some progress in solving these types of equations. So instead of just thinking about 5 now, I want you to think about a whole list of numbers, a whole collection of numbers at once that form a block. And these objects actually are called matrices. So a matrix is just a block of numbers. It's a way of expressing a whole bunch of numbers at once rather than just five. So let me just introduce you to sort of the basic form of, of matrices and how they appear and how we look at them and so forth. So this is an example of a matrix. And you can see it's just a block of numbers. This is uh, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 0, oh, and so forth. And now, First of all, how would you read this? Well, I would say that this is a 2 by 3 matrix. And the reason is because there are uh, two rows and three columns. These things here are columns, and these here are rows. And so when I talk about the size of a matrix, I'm talking about how many columns and how many rows. I'm sorry, how many rows and how many columns? columns. So this would be a 2 by 3. 2 by 3. 2 rows, 3 columns. 2 columns and 3 rows. Let's try these. There's another matrix, different size. This would be actually a 1 by 3, right? Because 1 column and 3 rows. Why do I always get this screwed up? One row and three columns. You don't have to remember it? Like, you know, in, in some of these ethnic restaurants where you choose one from column A and one from column B and one from column C. You ever seen that? Maybe you haven't seen that. Anyway, I used to do that. So here's the row and these are the columns. This is a one by three. What about this? Well, this would be a three by three. So this has size three by three. There's nine numbers in this one. This is a three by two. So it sort of looks rectangular. It's 3 by 2. This is a 3 by 1. 1, 2, 3 by just 1 column. Here we have two rows and three columns. So it's a 2 by 3. We always give this measurement first, how many of these, and then how many of these. Uh, here we have a, ooh, this is a biggie. Can you see this one? This is a 3 by 4 because we have um, four columns and three rows. So we say it's a three by four. Anyway, that's the way we denote them. That's how they look. And now what we're going to see is how they actually have some power by just manipulating not just five, but now we're going to manipulate all these numbers at the same time. So we're going to start to do algebra and arithmetic on collections of numbers or on arrays of numbers. And these are all known as matrices. We'll take a look at how all these go up next.